It's a Dodo Weekly Show. Yay! Hey guys, you're watching the Dodo Weekly Show, your source of news, mechanics, and whatever that interests me. This is Luminous, your host for the show, and let's get right into the news. Solemn face, because... E-Home 820 is leaving the Dodo scene. Yes, 820, the captain of E-Home, has been there since the beginning of time for Chinese competitive Dota, is now calling quits. Which shouldn't come as too much of a surprise because back in the end of 2010, um, that's that I think he made a message saying that hey, you know, maybe it's time to quit. Of course, he stuck around for like you know six more months, nine more months, but now it's it's time to quit. And the difference between 820 quitting and a lot of other Dota players quitting is yes, the, the reason is still the same. It's like oh, you know what, I've lost passion for the game. Um, you know, it's it's not as fun as for me anymore, and and I you know. That, that's why he's quitting. But the difference is he, he's accomplished a lot more, and I think a lot more than most other players they could say have accomplished. I think he arguably led the strongest team in the world in 2010, uh, won a whole bunch of tournaments. To me, he's leaving the Dota scene accomplishing something. Like He's like, you know what, I, I've done this, this is a chapter in my life, I accomplished something here, and I'm done. And there's no regrets looking back, there's there's nothing like that. And I think he's leaving the scene with head held high. And I think that's, that's very admirable. Um, it, it's really sad to see A20 go, but it, it's happening. Um, Ehome now is going to be in huge trouble. It's not just replacing a player now, because they have to replace their captain. And, you know, there's a lot of emotional ties, and etc, etc. So, um, Ehome has a lot of games to play. They're in the HFGL, they have to play in the WEC qualifiers, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, so they, they have an uphill uh, battle to fight right now. Of course they have that, uh, su supposedly they still have that pub, um, the pub uh, star that they've been recruiting, so I, I don't know how that's going. We still haven't really seen Ehome play lately yet. So hopefully everything's going well for Ehome. Um, but yes, A20, we will remember him. He is just ridiculously buff. You cannot stop this man. A beast. Every sense of the word. He can't even pick up the Aegis. This is a regular AP game, and he can't even pick up the Aegis. He's decked out with items. What a farmer this guy. Who's it? I gotta remember this guy. EH820 Gigabyte. Alright, Gigabyte. I'm gonna remember you, my friend, Gigabyte. Second thing is WDC Qualifier is happening uh, soon in China. How the WDC Qualifier works is the eight best Chinese teams, aside from Nirvana in China, is invited to duke it out to fight for the top three spots. And then these three spots, along with Nirvana in China, will be representing China, at least in the WDC tournament. Uh, if you're wondering why Nirvana in China is, have a free slot, well, basically because they won WDC last year, so they get a free slot there. Um, if you want me to list the top best China, top eight best Chinese teams, it would be the two IG teams. You have Ehome, you have LGD, DK, Panda, Tyloo, W. You know, we, we know those those household names. So the, they were they will be competing. Um, I would doubt that the replays will be released because it's WDC and they don't release the replay until the tournament's over. But but you know, they might be there. So we'll do what we can in terms of bringing you those games. Now there's a lot more news this week. And I'm really running out of time, so I won't be covering too much of it. And I definitely urge you to read it on SG Gamer or Ghost Gamer. But some of the news, including Nordic Esport, is disbanding. Some of their main player is going to Nevo, which I think Nevo is having a huge roster change as well. I believe Cinderin is no longer in the lineup, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and now they're playing under a tag called Monkeys. So I don't really know whether that's a joke tag or that's actually... A legit thing. Uh, Druids is no longer with their sponsor as well, so they're called EMC, and they're looking for a sponsor themselves. So huge changes in the European Dota scenes as well as the Chinese Dota scene. Uh, definitely a lot more to read. Again, go on Ghost Gamer or on SGGamer.com. So that's it for the news this week. Let's move on to mechanics. For this week's item comparison, we're gonna look at three different items: the butterfly, the Majoner, and the Bariza. And same thing with last week, we are only caring about the raw TPS output of these items. Yes, I understand that Butterfly has a evasion component, it has a armor component, but you know, for the sake of discussion at hand, we're going to look at the DPS item, because sometimes in, in the late game situation, you, you want to just, just know, hey, which item does the most damage. Uh, so here's what we got here. Um, the easiest way, I think, is to compare each item individually and then to kind of draw some conclusion uh, based on that. Now this graph and all the math is really done by Moran from the Advanced Mechanics Play Dota form. So 
big shout out to him for doing all of this and he actually made us a very beautiful graph which you're looking at here now the graph is going to be included in the description box you could just download it and then just uh, you know play around the graph um, so let's look at butterfly versus majonir and here's the graph that we're looking at uh, notice that we could adjust the armor based on uh, this is going to be the enemy armor and then we could adjust on the magic reduction level on the enemy as well because it really depends on these two now in terms of magic reduction that comes in handy when we're talking about the majonir as you know the chain lightning is a magical based spell and if, obviously if they have more magical reduction then your chain lining damage becomes less and less so gotta keep that in mind whereas butterfly deals most most of the damage through the raw plus 60 and of course the 60 increase in attack speed majonir deals a great deal of that damage in terms of the lightning proccing and also having that really really raw high increase in attack speed so the only thing that we really care about is the attack speed and the base damage that you have obviously we have to play around with the magic reduction and the armor value like i said earlier now for every one of these graphs which i'm hiding for now um, all the items on the left is going to be starting out on this region of the graph on the left side of the graph or left or top and then the the second item will be on the bottom or the right portion of the graph now as you can see here just based on a zero armor value which is completely not realistic and a uh, 25 base magic reduction 25 percent you can see that uh, Majonir is better for more most cases, especially when we're talking about late game scenarios where we have really high base damage and rather high attack speed. So for that, we're gonna see Majonir is better. But the the difference in how how much better Majonir becomes is when we start raising that armor value. If you raise that armor value to something respectable like maybe 25, you can see that the graph fly flies off the chart which basically means that whatever we're looking at right now Majonir is a lot better I don't care if you have one attack speed which is ridiculously low that's your base attack speed actually and it like 20 damage Majonir will still be better in terms of doing damage to that uh, magical side of course if we're up against an anti mage which basically has a basic 25% reduction and a 50% spell shield reduction we're looking at something like 62 ish reduction reduction you can see that the this chart still disappears from the graph which means that even though you're up against a heavily magically reduced uh, enemy, the Majonir will be still a far better DPS item against a butterfly. Um, of course, if we're looking at you know, like if we're looking at max 100% reduction, where you basically get rid of the chain lightning, then you could see that the butterfly becomes significantly better. So obviously, you're never going to be up against 100% magic reduction. So um, really, the Majonir is is far far better in in many situations. Now let's look at the Breeza versus the Majone. And this graph becomes a little bit more interesting to look at. So let's look at low armor values and the basic 25 magic reduction. You can see that in most late game situations, the Breeza again, the item on the top slash left, and then the Majone on the item on the bot right. Uh, Breeza is going to be a little bit better, or a lot better in most cases, where you have really high attack speed uh, to work with and then fairly high damage. And the reason being so is that the Bereza actually increase your damage output by a factor of 130 something percent. So if you're doing 100 damage, uh, you're really doing 100 some 137 or so damage. The math is going to be again in the description box. Uh, and really, the the magical side dam the magical side of the Majona can't really keep up with that kind of uh, reduction. Of course, if we're looking at against really really high armor value. The Majonir is going to be starting to be a little bit better for more cases because, um, again, the magical side is not reduced by armor. But likewise, if we're up against you know more magically reduced uh, enemies, such as against an anti mage again, then the Bereza will be a lot better. Now, again, we're not really taking account into the static lightning uh, of, of the, the, the lightning shield that you could put on your teammates. Uh, that would be a little bit dif more difficult to calculate, but uh, you you will definitely get some damage there as well uh, so Bereza and, and the end of this comparison it seems to be it's it's pretty even it, it really comes down to what armor value of hero you're up against you can see that in some cases Majonir will be vastly better in other cases where we up against higher if they have a hood uh, if they have pretty low armor then you can see that the Bereza will be better as well so in this one it's pretty much a toss-up in terms of what items you're up uh, what lineup you're up against what enemies they have what spells they have etc etc the last item comparison is the, I, I suppose, the most in, uninteresting one, which is a Bereza versus Butterfly. The magic reduction of the enemy would have no effect on it because, 
you know, there's no magical base component of either of these two. The armor value wouldn't have any uh, thing to go against cause, because uh, the armor will be reducing both of these uh, items equally. And you could clearly see that Bereza in 99% of the time, in any late game situation, Bereza will be better in terms of a raw DPS item. So that's more or less the uh, magical, magical uh, that's more or less the mathematical side of looking at these three items. Let's look at the strategical side and some of the things that we left out in our calculation. The first thing that we left out is, like I said earlier, we did not calculate the static links uh, damage done by Majonir. And that's going to give you some pretty nice magical based damage as well as a hit. It's going to proc and it's going to zap a couple of people. Um, the Majonir is a AoE based item. Yes, it is an AoE based item. All of these comparisons are damage done to a single target. So if we go back to the Majonir versus Bereza graph here, uh, we could see that actually maybe the uh, Majonir might still be better off still. If you want to care about total DPS output against the entire enemy team, uh, Majonir gives you quite an AoE based item, uh, AoE based damage there as well, whereas again, Bereza is a single target base. Now one thing you got to be very careful about Majonir is, yes, it's magical base, so it's reducible by things like pipe. So if we're up against a pipe, which blocks 400, damage incoming from the magical base side you can see that yeah Bereza is a lot better so again Majonir versus Bereza it really comes down to a what your enemy is getting in terms of item what your enemy is getting in terms of um, heroes etc etc so this one is, is is a doozy it's up to you to decide it's really quite difficult to to really uh, pinpoint which one is ex exactly better now of course the Majonir is an orb effect and orb effect is uh, you know a little bit looked down upon you can get some of the better late game orbs uh, such as the lifesteal as well so something to keep in mind as, as you look through these two item comparisons so personally when I think about it when I when I uh, found out about these calculations it came as, as a little bit surprising I think in my opinion Majonir should be better uh, in most cases and then we're gonna see Bereza and then Butterfly being outclassed quite a bit by both of these items so that is gonna be the item comparison of this week I uh, hope you guys learned something from it as well okay that's for mechanics and let's move to the interesting thing of the week which is not really of this week, it's more like two or three weeks ago. But uh, two or three weeks ago, I was playing this game called Reseter. And let me tell you, it is one of the most addicting games I've ever played. Here's the basic premise of this game. You're playing as a girl, and you run an item shop. And you buy items, and then you sell items. Now, I know that sounds like, what WTF, that sounds like the most ridiculous thing. Uh, but it's actually quite addicting. Uh, of course... Uh, there's two portions of the game. One portion is, you know, the buying and selling like I was talking about. The other portion is the dungeon exploring portion. Uh, for the buying and selling part, again, you, you run an item shop. At the end of the week, you have to pay a certain amount of money. Like, you, you, you're you owing someone's money, so you have to pay back a loan. So, and, of course, that, that loan amount gets increasingly higher and higher each week. So, you have to sell more and more each week. Um, well, of course, as you sell more, you get to buy better items, and then you sell for a higher price. Uh, you can sell for as high as you want or as low as you want, but again, you have to make a certain requirement at the end of the week. So you, you know you have to you have to barter back and forth and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm into money, so that's that's uh, that game that part at least really attracted me. The second part is the dungeon crawling part, which is basically you have a character, you fight monsters in the dungeon, you look for drops, you look for treasure chests, and you use that treasure chest to either sell it within your own shop or you forge, you know, make it make better items, and then you again you sell it back in your shop. So it all circulates back to your item shop thing, uh, but. I don't think I'm doing it justice in terms of describing how addicting this game is. Uh, there were times where I'd be like, you know what, I'm just going to just play, you know, 10 minutes, uh, play one day, which uh, time equivalent of, of, of the game, which is, you know, just like 10, 20, 30 minutes. But I'm just sitting there for two hours, you know, in a time. So it's a very, definitely very addicting game. It's, it's very RPG-esque, but then you're not traveling anywhere. You're just in your own town, you're in, the, in your own little item shop. So I definitely recommend this game to people that have time to kill, not you guys dedicated students, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely people with time to kill because uh, you know you can sit down there and play for 30 minutes or 3 hours. So it's definitely a very interesting addicting game, Rest of Tear, one more time, uh, I definitely recommend you guys to check it out. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this week's interesting thing as well as the Dota Weekly Show. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this week's show and as always, this is Loomis signing off. See you guys!